Welcome to FM Tuition Academy. Are you a grade 8 or a grade 9? Or are you a parent who has come across this video? You want your child to be trained on how to answer past papers. So we teach grade 8 and 9. You can WhatsApp us on that number and we'll be able to train your child to effectively learn how to answer examination questions. So contact us on that WhatsApp line 95 the WhatsApp line is there. You can contact us. Okay. Let's go straight into an exam paper. Okay. So this is the exam paper, guys. So this is the exam paper. So let's look at this exam paper. Question one. Which of the following? This is 2017 past paper. Which of the following indicates the correct sequence of travel of an unfertilized ovum? from the beginning until it leaves the body okay so the way it is is like this the female reproductive system it looks like this okay this is the way it looks like the female reproductive system okay it looks like this and then it comes like this this is a female reproductive system so it comes like this okay and then this side is like this. So this side, this side, they're like these things, they call them ovaries. They're found on the female reproductive system. So these are ovaries. I think you already know this, guys. So these are ovary. Okay? Ovary, even this side again, there's another ovary there. ovary and then this is called the fallopian tube or, or the oviduct so this is called the oviduct or fallopian tube and then here it's a cervix here just here, this part here before you reach this part is a vagina it's a vagina okay and then here is a cervix So, when the ovum is released, it comes first from, the ovum when it's released, huh? it starts from the ovaries, and then it goes into the oviduct here, okay? This part is a uterus, hey? this part inside here is a uterus, okay? This part here, all of this part is called the uterus, maybe you don't know, this part is called the uterus, uterus. Ras. So, when the egg comes, it starts first from the ovaries. When the when the ovum is the ovum, it means the egg. So the ovum is released from the 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 ovaries. It comes like this. It is coming like this. It enters the oviduct, comes into the uterus. From the uterus, it will go out, enter cervix. And then it comes out from the vagina like that. That is the path it takes. Okay? So that's how it comes first from the ovaries, passes through the fallopian tube or the oviduct. From the oviduct, enters the uterus. From the uterus, passes the cervix until it comes out from the vagina. So what is the answer here? Okay? I was just doing this for illustration purposes to just help you to understand. So I'm going to remove this. Okay, I'm going to remove this to just help you understand. Okay, the reason why I was doing this was just for the sake of understanding purposes. Okay, so I'm going to wrap that. I was just doing that uh, to just teach you. So it means the answer here is going to be D. It starts from the ovary goes to the oviduct they were showing you and then uterus and then vagina so the answer here is d the way i explained okay question two which body changes happens during puberty in both girls and boys puberty is when a, a boy and a girl reach maturity and then they notice uh, changes in their body for boys you find that uh their voice will increase 
even they'll start developing muscles and so on okay they'll start even have having pubic hair uh, it happens to both boys and girls pubic hair uh, it will develop in the at the female reproductive system and also the male reproductive system so what which of these happens both it happens both in males and it happens in females for example if you look at the, the first the first answer its body grows rapidly which happens both in males and females so the answer is a here why because b it says breasts grow large so this one only happens in females females are the ones are the only ones who have who, who, whose breasts go uh, uh, large because males don't have breasts so it doesn't happen both in males and females it only happens in, in in females and then c it is pubic hair around the valve you see males don't have a valve it's only females who have got a valve okay so this one only happens in females d says pubic hair grows at the base of the what the penis so this only happens in males it doesn't happen in both males and females so they're looking for the answer that happens in both so the one that happens in both males and female is the body grows rapidly it happens in both the male and the female okay both both their bodies grow rapidly okay uh-huh and then let's go to the second question question three the diagram shows uh, the position of a foetus before birth in a human okay so this is a female and then she's pregnant so that's the position there's this part called r you can see it uh, this part called r so have you seen sometimes when a woman they're saying what's a function of r you see when a woman is moving sometimes you find that this part here the one that you're seeing here this part it has got like a liquid form this whole part here it's surrounded by a liquid form around that baby so what's the function of that part that part there in case a woman accidentally uh, sleeps and then she either falls down or someone bumps into her so this part always pre uh, prevents uh, the foetus this part always prevents uh, uh, the foetus from mechanical shock so the answer is b okay the answer is b here on question three mechanical shock so prevent the foetus from mechanical shock the answer is b okay now question four question four a woman has a pregnancy which is 24 weeks how many weeks is a is a, is is remaining in order to have a normal birth so the normal weeks for a person to give birth the normal weeks is 40 weeks guys so 40 weeks that's a normal number of weeks for a, for a person to give birth 40 weeks okay and and then once it's 40 weeks then it, it, it you can give birth okay you can give birth now what about the, if you have chopped off 24 from the 40 weeks how many weeks have remained so you need 40 weeks for for the child to completely grow in the womb until the, uh, the, the 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 woman gives birth but 24 has been used here a woman has a pregnancy of 24 weeks how many weeks is she remaining with in order to have a normal birth so we'll say 40 40 minus 40 minus uh okay let me write on top here just to help you to understand so i'll say the, the space here on top i'll just say i'll write it on top here so 40 minus 16 uh, minus uh, 24 sorry okay 40 minus 24 so the answer which you are going to get here is actually 16 16 16 is the answer so the answer here it is actually c okay so even when you look at these answers when you come on the next page the answers are indicated for you the first one is d the second one is a the other one here it is b the other one here it's 16 which is exactly the way i showed you from here okay the answer here it is c okay let's go to the next question
question five. Those are just the answers. Okay. Uh, the the table below shows the, uh, the the table below shows nutrients and their sources. Fats come from butter and gas. Protein come from meat. No, protein never comes from meat. Uh, rape, no. Vitamins are the ones that come from rape. So this one is uh, this one is wrong automatically. Vitamin D comes from eggs, milk, apples. No, this one is no. Uh, that one better no. So the correct answer here is actually D. Carbohydrates comes from maize, potatoes, and cassava. So the answer here it is D. So D is the answer for question five. Question six. Which of the following correctly shows the nutrients responsible uh, for the disease due to lack of protein? Okay, whenever there's lack of protein, you're dealing with kwashoka. So the answer is A. When there's lack of protein in the body, you're dealing with kwashoka. So the answer is A. Which of the following is not a natural cause of air pollution? Okay, air pollution is the, when the air is contaminated. Okay. So it means gases are going into the air and then they are con contaminating it. So which of the following is not a natural cause, meaning it doesn't happen naturally? Forest fires. When when you whenever fire, forest fire comes up. A forest fire. You find fire sometimes starts in the forest naturally. That's this one is, it happens. So this this one is the, a natural cause. Fire can start alone. Because when you when you go in other places like Western Province where it's very hot, you find that certain bushes the fire just starts on its own. So this is a natural cause. Wind pollution, wind blows on its own. Okay, volcanic uh, eruptions it also happens on its own. Wastage from insulators. This one is not is not a natural cause. Do you know what an insulator is? An insulator is uh, when whenever for example people have killed a. Uh, and seen later, it's used, for example, when people kill a, a cow. You see, those uh, body cows, those, those, those parts that they don't want to use, they go and burn them in, in, a, in, a, in a chamber called unseen later. So it's not a natural thing. It's actually built by people. People make an insulator where they throw waste materials there. Okay? Even when you go to hospitals, when someone has got an operation, maybe they cut the... A small part of their body and so on. They throw them in an insulator. And insulator, it is, it is made of uh, bricks like that. And then there is fire there. And then that's a that's a fire that is used to burn uh, body parts or animal parts. For those ones, for a, in hospitals, used to burn uh, human parts that were removed from bodies due to operations. But in butcheries, they burn. The parts of goat, see, maybe they want to throw those parts of a goat, of a pig, of a cow, and so on. So this one is not a natural cause of air pollution. It is created by man. So the answer here is D. They want a one that is not a natural. So forest fires natural. It starts naturally. Wind, wind also, wind erosion starts naturally. Volcanic eruptions. I've seen volcanoes in movies. You see, they just start on their own. They're not man-made. Okay, question eight. The diagram below shows a microscope. So, which of the this is the answer? These are the parts. You already know that this is the eyepiece. Okay, this is eyepiece. That you know. This is eyepiece. This is definitely eyepiece. And then this one. Oh, sorry, sorry. I made a mistake. I mean, the S is the eyepiece. This one is eyepiece. S is the eyepiece. I piece. Okay, this is the eyepiece. And then the X is the lens. Okay, these are lenses that you know. Okay, and then Y is a body tube. Okay, these are the parts. Body tube. Body tube. So the answer here is actually A. The answer here is actually A. So the answer is this one, A. So for question eight, the answer is actually what? A, guys. A is the answer for question eight. Okay, so those are the parts. That's the eyepiece. That is the objective lens. That is the objective lens. 
and then and so on. So the answer is A. Okay, let's go to the answers that are there. The answers are put for you here. Those are the answers I was explaining. So these are the answers. They are accurate put for you. Okay, for those questions. I was just trying to show you and explain. Okay, guys. Okay, the process in plants which makes it possible for water and mineral salts to move from the roots to the rest of the body. Okay, if this is a plant, guys, for example, this is a plant, it's like this. This is a plant, these are the roots, guys, these are the roots. And, okay, this is the ground. Okay, this is a ground, for example, that is a ground, that is a soil. Okay, this is a soil. And then the water, these are the stems, of course, this is a tree, like this, this is a tree. Okay, now... The water will come from the roots. It's going upwards, this side. You see, in this direction. It's coming from the roots. So this process of the water coming from the roots and mineral salts coming from the roots is called transglation. Okay? It's coming from the roots, going upwards to all the parts. Water and mineral salts. It's called transpilation, guys. Okay? Transpilation. Okay? Transpilation, guys. So it's called transpilation. That's what it is called. Okay. So... I was just trying to help you to understand. So it is actually called transpilation. That's what it is actually called. It is called transpilation, guys. Transpilation. Okay, so the answer here is actually what? Transpilation. So the answer here is actually C. Okay, transpilation. Okay, and then there they're saying uh, what which set correct which set correctly shows. Those parts that are found in both a plant and an animal cell. Okay. So, for example, an animal cell looks like how? It looks like this. Have you seen? This is an animal cell. Like this. That's how it looks like. And then it has got a cell vacuole there. And then here it has got a nucleus. Okay. And then that is a plant cell. Sorry. This is a plant cell. This is a plant cell. Plant cell. And then an animal cell looks like this. An animal cell looks like that. An animal cell looks like this. So an animal cell looks like this. And then... This is the way the animal cell looks like. So, it has got a cell vacuole like this and a nucleus there. So, have you noticed they look same? Only that the parts that are common, both have got a nucleus. So, the plant cell has got a nucleus. So, this is a nucleus. This is an animal cell. This is an animal cell. Don't get confused. An animal cell. So the plant cell has got the nucleus here. Also, the animal cell has got a nucleus. So the nucleus is found in both. One. And then apart from that, cytoplasm. This part is called this part here is called the cytoplasm. This one. This part. It's called the cytoplasm. This part inside here is called the cytoplasm around the cell vacuole. The cell vacuole is the one that is on the center here. So this whole part surrounding the nucleus is called the cell vacuole. So the cell the cell vacuole is actually this one. The whole of this, I mean the this part around the vacuole. The vacuole is the one that is on the center. So this part is called the cytoplasm. And also here, the this part is called. Let me use uh, yellow so that you can understand well. Mm -hmm. Which part is a cytoplasm? Which part is a cytoplasm? So this area here, the whole of this area is a cytoplasm, and it's found in both. So this area is a cytoplasm. This one. Okay. Again, here it's inside here. Here it is inside. Okay. Here it is inside. Okay, and then the outer part here, this one is called the cell membrane. This one, the cell membrane, this outer part here, this outer part here is called the cell membrane. 
and the cell membrane is also here this outer part so i think if you look at the topic you study on cells you notice that there are three parts that are common in both uh, animal cell and plant cell and those ones that are found in both is actually d okay d is the answer so the one that is found in both is actually d we've got uh, oh not d sorry it is uh, c we've got the cytoplasm the cell membrane and the nucleus so both plant and plants and animal cells have got a cytoplasm they have got a cell membrane and all of them have got a nucleus so those are the three parts that are found in both memorize them and understand them and then here it shows the uh, carbon dioxide molecule a carbon dioxide molecule usually carbon dioxide is written like this as a formula it is written as co2 with a two down but when you are drawing it you draw this c you put it on the middle like this okay and then this side you put O, even this side you put O. And always there exists a double bond. So this side this is a double bond. So this side I'll draw two lines to this oxygen, also two lines to that oxygen. Okay? So C on the middle and then, so meaning the correct answer here, guys, is actually C. This one is the correct answer. Okay? So it is drawn like that. CO2, when you're writing it, but when you're drawing it, it should look like this. So, meaning the correct answer here, I was just trying to make you understand. So, the correct answer here is actually C. This one is the correct answer, C. Okay? Our answer here is actually C. Okay? So, here, uh, answer here is C, C here. Okay. Here, the diagram shows the water being heated in a kettle and so on. So, the water is coming out. Mm -hmm. When the water comes out, it hits this cold water, and then it becomes water this side. So the water is coming out as vapor here. So the water is coming out as vapor. It hits this cold, this cold surface, and then begins to drop like this into this uh, beaker. So this part is called condensation, where gas becomes a liquid. Gas, gas, okay, it changes to a what? It becomes a liquid. Okay? Liquid. Which this part is called condensation. So the answer here is actually C. C is the answer. The answer is actually C. Question 12. The answer is C. Condensation. So condensation is actually the answer, guys. So condensation is the answer. Let's go to the next question so that we proceed. Okay. So these are the answers, guys. Okay. You can see this translation there, the ones I was showing you. Cytoplasm, cell membrane, and so on. And then like that, these are the answers for those previous questions. Let's go to these questions. Okay. The diagram below shows the, an apparatus E, F, and G. Which of the following apparatus is used to separate sort uh, sand and salt. How can you separate sand and salt from the diagram? So the first thing is you need what you need is actually a funnel. A funnel will separate a, a, sand, a sand, and then this one will separate an evaporating disk. Will will separate uh, salt. Okay, an evaporating disk. It does separate salt. In case you didn't know. So it means the first thing is the first thing that you do is this. Maybe I show you. The, the first thing is like this. The first thing is you put a funnel like this, okay? Like this. You put a funnel like this, and then you put a beaker like this. And then here you put sand. Uh, uh, you put, you drop in. How can I explain? To make you understand. If this is a beaker like this, okay? And then here you have got sand, okay? Sand is here on top. And then you mix it together with the salt so the sand here and then there is salt here on top okay salt and sand salt and sand and then you mix it with water okay you mix it with it with water like this on top there there's water and then you pour this here 
when you pour it in there what will come out here here what is going to be in here it's salt water salt water is going to be in here okay so after salt water comes in here the sand will remain on top here here what will remain is a sand here on top what will remain is sand sand will remain on top here so you filter the sand first and then here what will come is salt water salt water so when the salt water comes when this salt water you remove this salt water here now okay now to just remain with the with the water with the salt minus the water you take this you put it on that evaporating disk here then you heat it when you heat when you heat it there what will remain on top of that thing here on top there what will remain is actually salt okay so it means you need the filter paper you remove the sand and then when 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 the salt water comes out that salt water you put it on an evaporating disk and then you heat and then those are the crystals that will remain on the evaporating disk you have separated i was just trying to show you how it's done so that you don't get confused okay so that's how you do it i'll wrap this this was just a separation technique to explain so don't get confused now. don't get confused don't get confused okay so roughly that's how you do it guys so that's how you what you do it okay so let's go to the next part the next question uh, let me just wrap this so that i remove all those i was just putting them to help you to explain and to understand how it is basically done so meaning the answer here it is you need this and you need that so the answer is e and g the answer here is d okay and then the next question here is e. the weight is 5 the calculate the weight calculate the weight if the mass is 15 kg and the gravitational pull is 10 so the formula for weight in case you don't know weight is equal to mass times gravity so weight is equal to the mass is what 15 so on mass here you put 15 times the gravity is what the gravity is okay let me do this so that i can do the calculation down we said this part um that part and that part so the answer here it's e. uh, wait first before we reach here we are on which one? Oh dear lord we accidentally deleted the, the question uh, 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 uh. there was a question that we are dealing with okay uh, I'll just explain. I've deleted one accidentally. There's a page I've deleted accidentally. Okay. But I'll explain using the same one. It's fine. The answer is already here. So, the answer is D here. There's one page that we deleted, but it's already here. So, I'll just use the same one instead of starting afresh. I'll just explain. Since the answers are here, I'll just explain how to get the answers. Okay so uh how do you calculate the the mass okay how did how do you find 150 there so the the formula is weight 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 is equal to mass times gravity you have to write that formula it's for the we are calculating question 14 okay so i'm calculating for you how the formula for weight for weight is equal to what is the mass the mass is 15 times the gravity you can see the gravity is 10 you see 10 so times 10 so the answer is 150 okay the answer is 150 the answer is what 150 that's the 150 that you are seeing here which is it c this is the answer here you can see it c is the answer here Okay, so here the answer is D, as I said, I explained. This answer is D, this answer is C. Okay. Okay, so I'm removing that. So this formula, you should write it for that question. Okay. So let me remove that. Okay, so as I said, this part and that part. 
so the answer here it is d which is this one here and then there okay weight is equal to mass times gravity so mass is 10 uh, i mean 15 times gravity which was 10 which was coming to 150 this is the 150 that is here so in case you didn't listen that is how to do newtons okay so you write that formula and write whatever i was explaining okay uh -huh. oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy there's something that i've accidentally deleted i've accidentally deleted what i was explaining let's pick that okay we'll come here we'll repeat uh this part that we need to repeat this part has to be repeated okay so i have to repeat that let's go back okay and then i have to repeat this this part we accidentally deleted it mm -hmm. and then um, okay uh, okay wait okay that is it okay so we accidentally deleted this so this is the like i said the answer here was the was d and then the answer here was the c i explained of course if you remember we picked this one and we picked this one and the formula for for 14 for this one number 14 we said weight is equal to mass times gravity we multiplied 15 by 10 we found 150 newtons okay 150 newtons that's how we found the 150 and then here a beaker contains that and the weight of that what is the density so the formula for density is there's that cut triangle that you use it's written like this okay and then density is equal to mass over volume so when you're writing the formula is density is equal to mass on top over volume so is equal to what is a mass what is a mass i come there let me write from this side uh, the mass is what the mass is 90 this is a mass the mass is 90 here okay and the density and and the volume is 40 so when we say density is equal to mass over volume what we are saying is the mass is 90 divided by the volume is 40 okay so when you're dividing those two what do you get what do you get in dividing those two this zero cancels with that zero how many times does four go into nine four into nine it goes one point remainder one you add zero to one it becomes ten four into ten it goes in two okay remainder two you add zero to this two four into twenty it is five so the answer here is c okay the answer here is c so our answer here is actually c they made a mistake here there was a mistake that i made here the answer here is c not not b the answer here it is did i do this question correctly let me see mm. Wait first.
okay we are dealing with this question we are dealing with this question so we said uh, density is equal to mass over volume so uh, the density is what the density is where the density the mass is 90 divided by the volume is 40 this cancels how many times does 4 going to 9 it goes 1 remainder that is 8 remainder 1 you add 0 there point is equals point it goes to remainder into 10 remainder 2 into 25 125 1.125 so the answer is not there kilograms per cubic centimeters so here the answer is not present but this is the correct answer so here they made a mistake there is no correct answer here on question 5 the correct answer is not present the answer is one point the answer is 1.25 okay but here on these answers is not present so it means there was a mistake so you you write 1.25 kilograms 1.25 kg per okay and then lastly question 16 mm -hmm. We're looking at question the last question now i'll wrap this so you follow these calculations huh? these ones the ones i'll showing you same they are from this side density this is a formula density is equal to mass over volume and then you came with the density formula i brought it this side is this one this side when you calculate this it will give you 1.25 what about the last question let me remove this okay the last question the last 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 question okay create space uh, we have deleted it extent okay okay and that one uh -huh. mm. the last last question this is the one okay the last question is this one okay how does heat travel from the ground to the top so the answer is right there so if you have got a beaker in i'm looking at question 16 so for example these answers are already there so i said um the, the if this is a beaker which is i mean this is a pot like this this one here and then here there's what heat source here okay so when you hit here it means this part is going to since this part this part is going to attract it by conduction here okay when you hit from this side you are hitting the pot this part is a conductor so it will at it will it will absorb the heat by conduction and then since here there is a liquid inside here so when heat enters a liquid it's going to be convection so here it's it's conduction conduction and then inside here it's convection the heat travels in liquids by convection convection and then here on top for it to evaporate to go upwards it is also convection so heat travels in liquid and gases by convection that's why the answer here it is conduction convection and convection it is a okay conduction convection and convection so that's how you do that i hope you have understood and you have learned something thank you so i've come to the end i know we took a little bit of time that was because we are rubbing rubbing a lot there were some things we were making some mistakes we had deleted accidentally some other papers but i hope this has opened your mind and you have understood how to answer this past paper so this is a lesson for today because i was also explaining to open your mind okay